Well, hello, boys and girls, and welcome to this episode of Path Preschool. We are so glad that you are here and that you've joined us today. My name is Sparkles. And my name is Ruff. Nice to meet you, kids. We're going to start out today's episode with a song by Mr. Rogers about being mad. We hope that you enjoy it. Mm-hmm. What do you do with the mad that you feel when you feel so mad you could bite? When the whole wide world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems very right? What do you do? Do you punch a bag? Do you pound some clay or some dough? Do you round up friends for a game of tag or see how fast you go? It's great to be able to stop when you've planned a thing that's wrong and be able to do something else instead and think this song. I can stop when I want to, can stop when I wish, I can stop, stop, stop any time. And what a good feeling to feel like this and know that the feeling is really mine. Know that there's something deep inside that helps us become what we can. For a girl can someday be a woman and a boy can be someday a man. Oh, I just love that song. It helps me to have ideas about what I can do when I feel mad. Boys and girls, what do you do when you feel mad? Do you do any of the things that we talked about in that song? I know that that sometimes when I feel sad, I just need to go to my room and have some time alone. I have a favorite blankie that I like to curl up with when I'm mad. Well, I know that sometimes when I'm mad, the first thing I want to do is hit something. But my mommy and daddy tell me that that's not okay. So I'm glad that I have this song now that I can sing to remind me of other things that I can do when I feel mad. I think next time I feel mad, I'm going to try running as fast as I can. That seems like that would be a good idea. I agree. Well, boys and girls, thanks for joining us today. I think that Teacher Summer has some fun things in store. Let's go find out what. preschool it's so good to see you and I see that you've already met my friends Sparkles and Ruff they decided to join us today and I thought what a fun surprise for the boys and girls of Path Preschool that's right we are super glad to be here today thank you so much for having us that's right we love Path Preschool it's our favorite preschool and our favorite place to be well boys and girls I am excited that you are with us today too. As you can tell, we are gonna spend some time today talking about our feelings. What can we do when we feel strong feelings like being mad? For the rest of our time together today, we are gonna read a couple of fun stories. I have a couple of different books that I really enjoy reading with my kids and I thought that we would have fun reading them too. Have you ever read a little critter book? These ones are super fun because as you read them, you get to look for Little Critter's friends. He has some special friends who show up on every page. And so as I read those, I'll be helping us to remember to keep an eye out for those special friends. And then we're going to read a book. This is another one of my favorite series, the Mr. Men books. There's also Little Miss books, but today we're going to read Mr. Grumpy from the Little Men series because being grumpy sometimes feels kind of like being mad. Do you agree? 
And then afterwards, I thought that we would have a little bit of fun playing with some Play-Doh. We haven't done that for a little while. So I have some blue Play-Doh today. So if you have some Play-Doh at home and you want to get that out, ask your mom or your dad or whoever, whatever grown up is with you to help you get set up. I have a mat that I'm gonna put down on my table and then I'll play with my Play-Doh on the mat. So we'll do that at the end of our video if you would like to get ready for that with me. Well, boys and girls, I'm so glad that you're here with me. I hope that you enjoy these stories. Let's get started. Okay, the first story that we're going to read today is called Me Too by Mercer Mayer. Now, this is one of the little critter books that I was telling you about. And in this book, we are going to look for this little mouse on every page, all right? So I want you to keep your eyes open and help me find him. All right, me too. When my little sister saw me riding my skateboard, she said, me too. Look, there's a little mouse sitting on the sidewalk. Then I had to help her ride. There he is again. I had a paper airplane that I made myself, but my little sister saw it and said, me too. Then she threw it in a tree. Oh man, where's the mouse on this page? You see him? There he is, right there. I went hiking with my friends and my little sister said, me too. I had to carry her because she got tired. Me too, me too. Okay, where's the mousey on this page? That's right, there he is, fishing. And can you find a froggy too? Where's the frog? That's right, there's the frog hiding in the water. When the snow fell, I got my sled and went to the top of the hill. Guess what my little sister said? Me too! <laughs> Where's the mousey? There you go. There's the mouse riding on the sled. I went skating on the pond. My little sister said, Me too! She doesn't know how to skate, so I had to hold her up. He's been a good big brother, isn't he? Look, there's the mouse. There was one last piece of cake. My little sister said, me too. I had to cut it in half, even though I saw it first. You see the mouse on this page? <laughs> here he is carrying the fork. And here he is with his own big chunk of cake. Yum. When I went fishing, she said, me too. Then she caught the biggest fish. Oh, look at that whopper. That was a big one. All right, can you find the mouse? What's he doing on this page? There he is. He's talking with the frog. I went to my secret tree house. My little sister said, me too. Mom said I had to help her up. Everything I do, my little sister says, me too. Where's the mouse? <laughs> Here he is. And look, there's a little ladybug friend. Today, my little sister had a candy cane of her very own. So I said, me too? There's the mouse. Guess what my little sister said? You too. No, oh, look at that. Because he has been such a good big brother, that made her want to be a good little sister too. The end. This is another one of my favorites called Mr. Grumpy by Roger Hargreaves. It was a lovely summer evening. Mr. Grumpy was at home. 
Cross Patch Cottage. He sat down in an armchair and picked up a book. And then, do you know what he did? He tore all the pages out of it. Every one! Mr. Grumpy can't stand books. He has a shocking bad temper. In fact, he's quite the most bad-tempered person you can imagine. Grumpy by name and even more grumpy by nature. The following morning, he was out in his garden pulling up flowers. He couldn't stand pretty flowers growing in the garden. When out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure. It was Mr. Happy. Good morning, said Mr. Happy. Good, said Mr. Grumpy. What's good about it? But, said Mr. Happy. But nothing, went on Mr. Grumpy. Get out of my garden. I beg your pardon, said Mr. Happy. You heard me, snapped Mr. Grumpy. Go away. I say, laughed Mr. Happy, you are a bad-tempered fellow. Humph, grunted Mr. Grumpy. And, went on Mr. Happy, bad-tempered fellows need to change their ways. Rubbish, retorted Mr. Grumpy, and went into his cottage deliberately stepping on Mr. Happy's foot as he passed him. Ouch, said Mr. Happy. Bang, went the door of Gr Crosspatch Cottage as Mr. Grumpy slammed behind him. Boys and girls, do you think that Mr. Grumpy is expressing his anger in good ways? I don't think so. He just hurt Mr. Happy. He hurt those poor flowers. He hurt that poor book. Let's keep reading and see what happens. Mr. Happy stood there looking not quite as happy as he normally does. His foot hurt. He thought and thought and thought some more. Then he had an idea. He smiled and went to see Mr. Tickle. Mr. Happy told Mr. Tickle of his idea of how to get Mr. Grumpy to change his ways. And Mr. Tickle grinned, the sort of grin that goes from ear to ear. That is, if you have ears, which he doesn't. Oh, he grinned, rubbing the hands at the end of those extraordinarily long arms of his together. That sounds fun. That afternoon, Mr. Grumpy went to town, shopping. He walked into Mr. Meat's shop. Mr. Meat was a butcher. Give me some sausages, snapped Mr. Grumpy, and be quick about it. Oh! Poor Mr. Meat, who was frightened of Mr. Grumpy, did as he was told. But as he was doing as he was told, something appeared through his shop doorway. <gasps> Do you know what it was? Do you see that? What is that? Let's find out. It was an extraordinarily long arm belonging to... Well, you can guess who it belonged to, can't you? That extraordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickle's came in through the door and across the shop and up to Mr. Grumpy and tickled him. Oh, squeaked Mr. Grumpy in alarm, dropping his sausages and looking round to see what had happened. But could he see anything? He could not. Humph, grunted Mr. Grumpy and picked up his sausages and went next door to the cake shop. Crash, went the door of the shop. Give me a cake, snapped Mr. Grumpy and hurry up. Poor Mrs. Fairy, who sold cakes, was frightened of Mr. Grumpy, so did as she was told. But as she was doing as she was told, guess what happened? Oh, squeaked Mr. Grumpy, dropping his cake and his sausages. He just could not understand what was happening. You see what I see? And the same thing happened at Mr. Daly's, the newspaper shop, and at Mrs. Humbug's, the sweet shop, and at Mr. Bottle's dairy, and at Mr. Packett's, the grocer's. It went on all afternoon. And all afternoon, Mr. Grumpy kept being tickled and dropping his shopping and picking it up and being tickled and dropping his shopping and picking it up and being tickled and dropping his shopping and... He just could not understand it. 
on his way home to Crosspatch Cottage, he met Mr. Happy again. Hello, grinned Mr. Happy, having a nice day. Get out of my way, snapped Mr. Grumpy, before I kick you. But almost before the words had passed his lips, that extraordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickles had appeared from behind a tree and tickled him again. He jumped in the air and dropped all his shopping yet again and fell over. Mr. Happy looked at Mr. Grumpy lying amid a jumble of sausages and cake and newspapers and sweets and milk and cornflakes. I think, he laughed, that if you were to change your ways and be not quite so bad-tempered quite so often, this sort of thing might not happen to you quite so often. Humph, grunted Mr. Grumpy. He picked up all his shopping yet again and went home to Crosspatch Cottage. But on his way, he did think about what Mr. Happy had said, because he very definitely did not like what had happened to him that afternoon. Mr. Happy and Mr. Tickle laughed and shook hands. And so, after that, Mr. Grumpy did try to be not quite so bad-tempered quite so often. And the more he tried, the less he found he was tickled. And so he tried more and more, and these days he's quite a changed person. Why, only the other evening he picked up a book, and do you know what? He only tore out one page. Huh. The end. All right, boys and girls. I have my daughter Amelia here. Can you say hi, Amelia? Hello. Hello. We thought that we would have some fun making Mr. Grumpy out of Play-Doh. <laughs> What's another word for grumpy? Mad or angry. Yeah, that's right. And we have been talking today about what we can do when we feel mad. We've been talking about good things that we can do to express our anger and not so good things. What's what's something that you do, Millie, when you are feeling mad or angry? Sometimes I go up into my room. You go up into your room. That's right. You did that today, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are going to make Mr. Grumpy now. So let's talk about the shapes that Mr. Grumpy is made of. Millie, what is his body? What shape is his body? It's mostly like um, a rectangle. A rectangle. So I'm going to start out by using some of my Play-Doh, not all of it, and forming it into the shape of a rectangle. Now we have some tools here, don't we? So if we, we wanted, knife, we, we could, could use it. some of our tools to make it, make it really straight, couldn't we? Or you can just form it, you know, with your fingers, can't you? Sorry, I keep handing this to you and then not really giving it to you. There you go. So we're going to make the body by making a rectangle. And if you want to make it flatter, you can use rolling pin. That's right. Okay. All right, now what should we do next to make Mr. Grumpy, do you think? I think we should make his arms and legs. Okay. You know what I was thinking is that we could use some of these long skinny strips that we just cut off to make his arms and legs. What do you think? Yeah. So there's an arm and another arm. Oh, but his, his, we got to make those feet too. So I'm just going to kind of do like that and just kind of bend it for his foot. How should we make his hands? I think just like little balls. Oh, maybe. that's a good idea. But we could also do something else. So there's one ball. And it looks like Mr. Ha Mr. Grumpy only has four fingers. How many fingers do you and I have? We have five. That's one, right. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> so Mr. Grumpy has less fingers than we do. Yeah, because he's a character, not an actual person. That's right. Once we're done with his fingers, we could make his nose, maybe, his hat. Okay. So what shape would we do for his nose? His nose is kind of like an oval. Yeah. So how is it an oval and not a circle? Because it's if an, an oval is stretched out either that mm -hmm. or that 
But a circle is just perfectly perfectly circular. round. Yeah. yeah. So an oval is kind of like a circle that got squished a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh, is that is that an okay size for his nose? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, the proportions can be different, can't they? Yeah, and then for his eyes, it looks like he has, like, he's squinting. Yeah, yeah so we could do that with really skinny pieces of Play-Doh, but I thought that I would maybe, I'm using a pencil, and I'm just going to kind of draw those on can like that. Pencil? Yeah, I can share this one with you as soon as I'm done. Okay. And can I do the same with his mouth? Yeah. Can I draw? Because he yeah. looks like he's frowning because he's Mr. Grumpy or Okay, bad. so there's my eyes. <coughs> Drop the pencil. And then what shape do we need for his hat? His hat looks like a rectangle, like his body, but oh. smaller. So just a smaller rectangle. All right. And then... For the brim of his hat, how he has that little black brim, mm -hmm. I'm just going to roll a really skinny piece of Play-Doh like this. And I'm going to place that right there. And then I'm going to put that over top of it. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. I like it. I like how our the proportions of ours are different. I have a smaller body and a big nose. You have a big body and a smaller nose. Yeah. Yeah. Different Mr. Grumpies. And that's fine. And maybe that's because you and I have different things that we need to do when we feel grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do when I'm grumpy, do you think? I don't, I'm not sure. One of the things that I like to do when I'm grumpy is be outside. So sometimes I'll go outside for, and I'll take a walk or I'll go out in our yard. And that gives you time to think about things. That's right. Yeah. Well, Millie, thank you so much for helping us make Mr. Grumpy. Mr. Grumpy. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much for being with me today. I hope that you enjoyed the two stories and the puppets. Look, here's another puppet. And one thing I didn't say at the beginning is that my daughter Amelia made all three of these puppets. She made them out of socks and felt and hot glue, didn't you? Yeah, I use hot glue for a lot of things. Yeah. So thank you so much for being with us today. We hope that you had such a fun time. Boys and girls, we want you to know that we think you are special, and we are so glad that you are a part of PATH Preschool. We'll see you again soon. Bye.